Hi everyone, my name is Bryony Gunson, greetings from Manchester in the UK. And I'm talking to you today about a topic that's close to my heart. And the title of this talk is Mental Health and Productivity, Learning to Surf the Waves of 2020. Now obviously 2020 has been a very interesting year and the psychological impact of COVID-19 is something that everyone has felt. And so conversations around mental health and productivity are things that I've been having a lot with my clients and also I've observed happening a lot online as well. So it's really something that I wanted to discuss today with you. And I'm going to be talking to you today, drawing on experience from two different worlds. I'm talking to you today as a digital marketer with 10 years experience. And I'm also talking to you today as a mindset coach, meditation teacher, and a breathwork practitioner. So I now support people with their personal development and well-being. So I'm really looking at it through these two different lenses. And I'm inspired by this quote from professor of medicine and mindfulness researcher, John Kabat-Zinn. And he famously said, you can't stop the waves, but you can learn how to surf. So maybe this talk is a bit of a surfing lesson. So what's my own personal story, just for context? Well, I'm no stranger to stress and anxiety. And for me, the low point was probably around seven years ago. I was living and working in London, and I remember one particular morning cycling to work, and I was cycling via Elephant and Castle Roundabout. And I remember just completely sobbing my heart out. I just couldn't stop crying because I felt so overwhelmed. Now, for anyone who's ever cycled in London, and particularly around Elephant Castle roundabout, roundabout, they'll know that grown men in Lycra have been brought to tears cycling around that roundabout. <laughs> it is that scary on the roads. But clearly, I knew that something was really wrong. Something had to change. And what I now do is a reflection of my own healing journey, looking to understand more about my mental health, my productivity, but really just understanding more about this human experience. And working in digital marketing, we're actually an industry that has a high tendency towards stress and burnout. So I'm sure that I'm not alone in, in having experiences like that. And actually I know for some of my coaching clients who work in this industry, that you know that stress and burnout is very real. So learning how to, Take, better take care of ourselves in challenging times is going to hopefully be a bit of a takeaway from today's talk as well. If we look at the way we work though, for now, that we're really seeing that with this pandemic, we're witnessing a global paradigm shift. So paradigms being our habitual ways of thinking and behaving, they're all starting to, to shift. So it's really kind of a bit of a chaotic time, quite a challenging time. But for me, it's also a time of opportunity. You know, it's really starting to think, okay, we can question the status quo now. Maybe we can create systems that better serve our needs rather than constantly trying to continue operating in a way that actually ultimately doesn't really serve us. So that's some of what I'm gonna outline in a moment. And I would love for you to ask yourself questions when it comes to the world of work, mental health, productivity, not just how do you work or where do you work, but how do you feel when you're working? Like what's coming up for you? And this is a lot of what I coach my clients through, trying to get a better understanding of how do you really feel like what is actually there for you, shining a light on your emotions. Now before 2020, we already had a bit of an unbalanced approach to work. And for many people, this looked like having long commutes, particularly in the UK, and working in high stress environments, but also not really having much time for ourselves. You know, this always on culture means that we really lacked the time to, and we've really forgotten the art of learning how just to be, you know, we're constantly doing. And what this experience can be like is that for many people, when we don't know how to switch off, you know, and for, for a lot of my clients, they may come to the end of their day and they're lying in bed and all of a sudden their mind is just in overdrive, you know, and it's a, a sign of the, the momentum and pace of our lives is just has us so overstimulated it can be really challenging to to just learn how to just calm down 
And if we think as well about this unbalanced approach to work, well, there's a cost involved really to all of this. And actually I spotted on Twitter that Arij and Chris were having a very similar conversation to ones I've been having with my clients around thinking about the cost of going back to work. Because I have quite a few clients who are kind of anxious about heading back into the office. So there's a financial cost, there's a time cost, and then there's the, the connection, the cost to connection, as in the connection to the people that you love, not being able to see them as much as well. So as Arij says here, the flexible working and remote working options should be things that we continue to discuss. It's really seeing that these big changes that are happening now, start to ask yourself, what is important to you? What do you want this to look like? Come back to that in a moment. So then, mental health and productivity at work. Let's have a look at what the data says around this topic. Now, I'm gonna share some um, stats and insights with you, but I'm also, I also recognize that in this talk, I am generalizing somewhat, you know, cause we're still in, the situation is still unfolding and it is vast and many people have had very, very different experiences during this time. So what I have to say may resonate with some of you, but for others, it may not. And that's okay. That's okay because we can hold space for people to have a variety of different views and experiences, knowing that ultimately everyone's perspective is valid. Now, when we think about how we work, let's say, this rhythm that we follow, the nine to five, Monday to Friday, have you ever questioned where it's really from? because ultimately it's a kind of a bit of a hangover from basically factory work. So as such, many businesses are still operating kind of like it's the 1950s. As I said, we, we end up stuck in these habitual ways of doing, and actually we're really resistant to change, even if it serves us. Um, and an example of this is how we have technology here to give us a lot of freedom, but we've still been quite quite slow to, to facilitate this these bigger scale changes, which may now actually be possible following on from the pandemic. When we think about opportunities, there's this nice quote from um, that I'll share with you. So, it is now infinitely easier, cheaper and faster to do what the 19th century could not do, move information, and with it, office work to where the people are. The tools to do so are already here. The two-way telephone, two-way video, electronic mail, the fax machine, the personal computer, the modem and so on. And obviously reading the second half of the quote, you're thinking, fax machine, huh? <laughs> so any guesses as to when this quote may be from? Yeah, it's from 1993, from uh, management guru, Peter Drucker. So the reality is we've had all these tools, you know, at, at our disposal. So why haven't we changed? Why haven't things shifted? And the fact is as well, this model that we're currently operating with, it doesn't really serve us. And there's this study from the health and safety executive where 80% of employed British adults said that they experienced work-related stress in 2020. And this was before the pandemic. I imagine that figure's probably bumped up a little bit since then. And there's a lot of benefits if we can have a more mature and compassionate conversation around mental health in the workplace. In this MIND study, so MIND are a mental health charity, they quoted that 60% of employees would feel more loyal, motivated and committed if their employer supported the mental well-being of all of their employees. And other groups have also benefited, if we think about the mental health um, uh, benefits of more flexible working, if we think about the, some of the physical benefits as well, there was this study done by Unison and um, three quarters of people with disabilities said that they felt that they were more productive working from home compared to their pre-lockdown place at work. And in that same study, those same people also overwhelmingly said that they experienced less physical pain and tiredness from long commutes. So clearly this kind of office-based paradigm needing to be in a certain place at a certain time, it's not really serving actually quite a lot of people. The reality is we're actually all emotional creatures and we have these animal bodies which have physical needs and as a result our productivity our productivity our ability to get things done it's gonna wax and wane you know even with your mood your ability to focus is is huge and ultimately our emotional state is going to have a big impact on our ability 
to be present. You know, if we're in fight or flight, or we're all caught up and stressed in our heads. We're not really aware of what's happening in the moment. And our ability to be more present ultimately will dictate our productivity. So mental health and productivity and presence, for me, they all kind of come together. But obviously it's not been so rosy, this kind of lockdown experience for, well, many people. And, you know, for quite a lot of folks, they've felt the strain of furloughed staff and needing to take on additional workload. You've had parents needing to work from home, um, homeschooling children and juggling a full-time job. Um, so as a result, you know, of all this additional stress, as well as not to mention the whole psychological impact of everything, you know, you can see the related search terms here around like depression, burnout, mental health, you know, that it has been a really challenging time. So we need to continue to have these conversations around how can we create a system that best serves our needs rather than denying our needs, our emotional needs, our mental needs, our physical needs to support what I see as a really outdated system. Something else I've also observed, there being big conversations around online as well as with a lot of my clients, um, particularly for NHS workers who I was supporting during lockdown with meditation sessions, is around our um, struggle to focus and our struggle to um, have the energy we need to get things done. Now, when we are exposed to chronic stress, uh, the psychological payload of that is called allostatic overload. So it's essentially the psychological wear and tear of being constantly stimulated into a fight or flight response. This little animal body, it can only do so much. So if that's been some of your experience, feeling this really uh, epic tiredness or struggling to focus, don't be hard on yourself. Like this is this animal body trying its best. But as I said, it's been some big experiences happening and trust that you have, are doing your best. But obviously we need to make sure that work is supporting us rather than um, further adding stress and strain to our lives already. And our ability to have open conversations with how we're feeling, you know, what's really happening for us is so incredibly important to our mental health and our sense of human connection. And this same mind study, 20 nearly 20% of employees felt that they couldn't tell their boss when they were overly stressed. And I know for me, certainly in the past, I really struggled with opening up, with sharing how I was feeling, you know, especially when you're feeling vulnerable, because we still so often see anyone who's struggling, you know, with their emotions or mental health, we see that as a sign of weakness. So that is such an outdated point of view and we that really needs to shift and hopefully, you know, this big collective global experience that we're all going through has meant that people are like, crikey, we really need to allow people to express themselves and uh, um, and to, to know that it's okay to, to be sitting with these big, big challenges. So I really see us now as having a choice. We can either choose to just slide back into how things were or we can pick up this new ball and run with it. Even if it's scary, even if we don't have it figured it all out yet, it's like trusting that there's new opportunities emerging, so let's go for it. I'm reminded of this Buckminster Fuller quote, who said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. This existing model is already obsolete. The data tells us, your experience tells us, so let's create something new. We'll briefly touch upon how do things look at the moment because as I said it's all shifting and changing we're kind of at a bit of a chaos stage but it certainly is a creative phase as well. When we're thinking about our mental health and productivity how can we simultaneously um, support both of these things? For me it all comes down to emotional intelligence which actually fortunately is also one of the top skills that employers cite that they really need. So actually it's within your interest for your productivity and for your mental health as well as your employability to focus on strengthening your emotional intelligence. Now any kind of intelligence is really just your capacity to understand. So rather than shaming yourself for having emotional experiences, for feeling up or down, thinking what's wrong with me, start to get more curious listen to yourself start to explore those thoughts and feelings with more discernment to start to figure out what is really happening and with that you will start to get better understanding with greater awareness comes better understanding so how can we strengthen our emotional intelligence then if it's this important 
Well, I would really love for you to see how you can dial up more use of your intuition, your gut feel, your ability to read people. We can even read people's hormonal profiles. Like, you know, when something's up with someone. So starting to have real conversations around how people are feeling, looking at the faces, listening to the voices of your team and starting to try and get a clearer picture of what's really going on. And what I mean by this is that something I've observed is that we can become overly reliant on data sometimes to, to tell us a story. So when we're thinking about productivity, I'm sure many of you have time management tools or timesheet data that you regularly consult and understand that you want to track and know what's going on. But what this can mean is that we may look at, say, like a utilization report and say, well, we're only at 50 percent capacity. But then you look around you and you see the struggle is real, <laughs> like people are may maybe missing deadlines or seemingly there's a lot of tension there um, and everything feels kind of difficult. And you look at the data and you think, ah, oh, it's only 50 percent. Like, what's wrong? Now, some people may be inclined to push people harder. You may be like, got to work harder, just got to ship it, got to get it done. <laughs> But in my mind, there's likely an emotional drain somewhere that is sapping people of their energy. So, to, and remembering that we, you know, we're not mechanical creatures. We have this this hangover again. Not only um, this 1950s working paradigms, but this kind of outlook that we're these mechanical creatures capable of continuous output, and that's just not true. <laughs> we're, we're, we're these weird, squishy, emotional animal bodies, and as I said earlier, like our productivity is going to change all of the time. So, the sooner we embrace our humanness and create systems that serve us rather than, than like just neglect our humanness to serve the systems, then you know, we're gonna be much happier and healthier. So start to make sure that you, you um, or you continue to ask these questions. How are you feeling? What is coming up for you? And don't be afraid of having these conversations, even if they can be challenging at first. And we need to ultimately make people our priority because without people, you don't have a company. Unless you're like a solo entrepreneur, I get that. And what we're starting to see now is that with so many people working from home, and particularly in the UK, there being reluctance to go back to the office, is that we have these empty buildings, which highlights what is the company? Is the company the building or is the company its people? We need to make sure that we're addressing the needs of people first, rather than the needs of say landlords <laughs> or the needs of the bottom line of the company. Because again, without people you don't have, they are your bottom line. So making sure we can focus on the needs of the people has to be the priority moving forward in my mind. And I recognize that in saying some of these things that it's gonna sound idealistic, that it's gonna sound like a bit of a pipe dream, that you're gonna say, well, you're not an agency owner, you don't understand the realities of these things. And you're already giving your power away. The moment we start to think like that, we're allowing the existing system to put blinkers on and for us to start to shut down our imagination and our ideas of what may be possible. You know, and if we're not going to innovate, then we're just going to regurgitate, which can going to have more of the same. We don't want to be a passive participant in these big changes. We want to paint a future of where we want to go and question what is actually possible. So what does the future look like? Well, ultimately it's down to you. <laughs> it's down to you. What do you want this to look like? Create that ideal vision. How do you best work? Get to know you and yourself. What are your emotions telling you? Understanding what does flexible working look like for you? You know, what are your needs? What drains you? What energizes you? What are your team's genuine strengths and how can you better work to them? We need to make sure we're continuing to ask these questions and always looking to shift our ways of working around supporting the needs of people. A happy workforce is a productive workforce. So don't be afraid of having these conversations, keep figuring them out and then also own it for yourself. Be upfront with your stuff. Tell people what your needs are because if you don't tell them, you're just gonna have to fit into the little box that you're given. <laughs> so now is the time to be asking these questions and to go for it. And tying it all back to this point around mental health and productivity, if we're able to be more present to our experiences, to know what's really going on for us, that's when everything, all the potential lies in the present moment, everything can change. So really learning how to be present is very important. This is a huge part of what I do, teaching people to be more aware of their experiences and what's actually coming up for them. Because ultimately, if you're not present, and most of the time you're mentally checked out, you're basically on autopilot. And you're not going to be in a position where you're going to be able to 
um, really uh, be an active agent for for change. If you're just kind of you know going with the status quo and not being really prepared to have some of these conversations, so invite that level of presence. Ask yourself big questions. Be courageous and go for it. Start to recognise that emotions are these self knowledge data points. You know you can mine them to gather your own insights about what you actually need, but more importantly, so you can better surf the waves of 2020. And if you want to learn how to better feel rather than just feel better, visit brianigunson.com forward slash brightness you. And I'll finish on this quote, that this time, like all times, is a very good time if we but know what to do with it. Thank you.